Hey and welcome back. Um, in the last video we went over getting Android Studio downloaded and configured um, and well, or at least set up. So today we're going to build off of that and just run the application that's already built for us. Kind of get a little hello world going. Um, so without touching any of the code here, either in the XML or the Kotlin files, um, we have a few buttons over here that are uh, of interest for the video. So this little hammer uh, will actually make or build uh, your project helpful for uh, sometimes when you make configuration changes and just want to make sure that everything would still build but don't really need to absolutely run it. <clears throat> I wouldn't worry too much about this, just know that uh, app should be selected. This will just allow you to toggle between different modules if you actually have them. Um, but here is a pretty important section. Um, as you can see here, I have a whole handful of emulators uh, already on this computer. Um, yeah, it's very interesting. These, uh, these two are not applicable for this app because we set them in SDK to, to something higher than what the device SDK is at. So, um, very, very interesting. Um, so you can create multiple, you can kind of toggle between different ones, and as you can see here, they're running different versions of Android. And this is super helpful for, you know, detecting how things are going to run on maybe older versions of Android, or if you're working on a team and, and there's bug reports of particular um, you know, specifications for, uh, for a particular type of device or Android level or maybe a combination of the two, you can mimic that here uh, in your emulator and then run it and see if you can you know, debug it that way. Uh, if you also plug in a physical device, you'll see it here uh, and you can select that and then that's how you can deploy it to your actual uh, uh, phone. Play button, pretty self-explanatory. It'll actually just run the app. This is helpful for debugging. Here's how to kick off the profiler. This is to attach a debugger to an already running uh, application. And the only two that I really want to worry about here at the moment are the AVD, Android Virtual Device, and the SDK uh, managers. So if you download Android Studio for the first time, I don't believe you have virtual device you'd actually have to create one so by clicking that um, you'll see the list of all your virtual devices but in this case let's go ahead and create a new virtual device and now we can select from a variety of Google based and some other uh, devices but I don't know I stick to something simple so I'm just gonna go with the pixel because um, I think I have uh, yeah, pixel two, pixel three. Ah, uh, whatever. I'll just I'll just make another one. Pixel three, XL. Uh, yeah, this little icon means that it actually has the Play Store on the device, um, as opposed to these ones don't. Could be helpful if again you're going to be t um, testing certain things that require the Play Store on them. Uh, so once you click next, you'll get the option to basically load a particular version of Android onto that hardware, onto that device. Um, if none of these are downloaded, the ones that you need, you can actually click download and in real time it will just start the download and then you'll be able to pick up from where you left off. Uh, why not? So let's do it. Um, if it takes too long, I'll edit this out. But uh, All right. Um, took a little longer than I thought, but uh, anyway, once you're done installing it, you can hit finish, uh, it'll refresh as you just saw, and then you can select which one. So let's go ahead and use this. Uh, AVD name kind of auto fills to something uh, about the device name and the API level, and that's super helpful and whatnot, but I actually like to uh, sometimes modify this only because 
Um, it's a little easier to see in the uh, in that little drop down menu. Uh, and I'll show you what I'm talking about in a second. But um, obviously keep well, not obviously, but I would keep this in portrait. Um, I actually disable this check, enable device frame. Um, what it'll do is it'll just put a, a frame around your around your screen to make it look like a device. However, uh, I just kind of don't like the way that it looks and sometimes things clip and it just doesn't like line up properly. So I actually disable this. You can leave it on if you want um, so that it actually looks like a real phone floating in your screen. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to finish. I will show you real quick how to get back into that. So if for whatever reason you find an emulator, you find that you want to change either the device frame, uh, either being there or not being there, make sure the emulator is killed, uh, like it is currently not running, and then you can click edit and just... Okay. And just go down there and disable it or re-enable it, whatever it is. All right, little loss there, but um, <clears throat> that works. Um, yeah, with the advanced settings, you can kind of update some other stuff. Uh, interesting, I didn't know you could set that. So anyway, uh, we'll see how it looks when it runs, if it has the device frame or not, but uh, after that, once you open this, you should be able to see your uh, emulator selected here, or that you've created here. Uh, this is what I was talking about. It's just a little easier to see this uh, when it's laid out this way, because uh, a lot of times I don't care about what phone it's on. I care more about what uh, software version it's running. So I'm going to go ahead and select the one I just made and hit the play button. Um, the first thing that will happen is if the virtual device is not running. Uh, yeah, this doesn't have the frame, as you can see. The virtual device uh, will start. So that might take a minute, uh, especially if it's the first time. Somewhere along the way, there might have been something asking for some, like, Haxm, H-A-X-M, permission. Um, on Windows, that's actually a little bit more annoying. Last time I did it, to allow. But on Mac, I think it's just like a quick yes allow. And uh, I think that has something to do with hardware acceleration. Um, but it, the emulators sometimes or, or always require it. So um, I would just enable that or allow it to allow it to happen. Um, so the emulator will run. As you can see here, it's basically just like a real phone booting up. Um, <clears throat> you can, yeah, maybe not right now is the best time to do it, but there's a variety of different uh, options that you can set, settings that you can change, um, locations that you can jump to. Yeah, for some reason we have this one saved from, from Tennessee, um, but it's kind of helpful because you can you know, very quickly set the simulator to a particular location. Um, as you can see there, basically anywhere in the world. So you could test certain things. Um, a whole lot you could do with the emulator. But all you need to know is that it is a real phone. Or, uh, sorry, it is a phone. Um, you can't send text messages and make calls and stuff like that, but you can definitely like download apps if you get one of the ones that has the Google Play Store on it and sign into Gmail and send emails and all that kind of stuff so and just know uh, that's another alternative if you need to get information onto the emulator somehow you can uh, you know sign into an email and send yourself an email and then you'll be able to view that email and the text or the, the link or whatever it is that you need will, will be there so this is taking a little bit. You can see here that the the uh, building the app actually finished, but we're waiting for 
our target device here, so the emulator's taking its sweet time. There we go, making progress. Okay. Uh, took a little while, but we have basically our Hello World app running. Um, if we quickly dive into the XML, we'll see that this screen, this main activity, that is the only activity that gets loaded, uh, has the Hello World text right here. If we uh, very easily change that to Hello World 2, it'll update in our little preview here. Um, this button, as it says, apply changes and restart activity, will actually keep your application alive and running. It will just kind of detect what the changes were and just restart the activity and get picked up. And oh god, I didn't meant to just click there. But this is apply code changes, um, which is just a more even a more lightweight version of that. Sometimes you'll get this, um, and that's because when you modify XML, it's a bit more difficult for these like quick boot things to work. However, this little balloon here is telling us that we can maybe apply changes and restart the activity. So that's this one. We will try that. It's basically just a faster way. I'm going to get that Hello World too. It's basically just a faster way instead of uh, doing this, which is rerun the application again. Um, so that's like, you know, kicking off more of the build process and then uh, relaunching the application. These two are kind of just like if you made quick changes, um, you know, you can kind of just refresh the application code, if you will, and it'll, uh, hopefully, the changes will be picked up. These become more important when you've built a bigger application, and let's say you're in, you know, a checkout flow that's six pages long for some reason, um, and you're on the last page, you know, you might just want to change code on the last page and then rerun it as opposed to having to rerun the entire application and then you land on the home screen and you've got to get through all those six pages again. So um, these two things are extremely useful, extremely powerful. Um, you know, they have their uses um, and they're relatively recent tools that have been added. Uh, so for now we can use them, uh, but any of these will really work. Um, and then obviously here, you know, stop sign kind of thing. Uh, it's not a stop sign, it's a square, but that'll just kill the application. And then you see once the application's killed, these options are no longer valid. Um, so the only option at that point is to completely rerun it. And then there we go, hello world too. So um, thank you guys for tuning in. We just covered uh, getting the emulator, getting an emulator up and running running the application that basically we built uh, or that Android Studio built out of the box for us, making one very small UI change um, and covering some of these buttons here. So uh, please like, comment, and subscribe, guys. Uh, be much appreciated. Uh, and in the next video, we will probably dive a little bit deeper into making a particular modification here to, let's say, the, um, the UI. I'll catch you there.